Hello and welcome to this video about the Clipple in situ room compensation module, short ISC, that helps you to measure every speaker in any room under standard conditions. In the next 20 minutes, I will show you how to perform fast acoustic measurements more accurately. And at the end of the video, some practical measurements will be performed. The in city room compensation is your tool to transform your office into a perfect free field. By compensating for the influence of the room, this will improve the accuracy of your acoustical measurements. No matter if you test the frequency response, distortions, or the transient behavior of your loudspeaker. Here is our roadmap for today. At first, we will have a look at the measurement targets and we'll discuss the benefits and drawbacks of common measurement setups. In the following, the new approach and key features of Clipple's in situ room compensation module will be introduced. Finally, we will demonstrate the new technique by measuring a two way vented loudspeaker system. Target of acoustic measurements According to the IEC 626821 standard, acoustic measurement should be performed under free field and far field conditions. We have to measure the linear frequency response of the device under test in the full working range. Furthermore, we have to determine the nonlinear behavior, like harmonic distortion, intermodulation and multitone distortion, and other time variant behavior, like compression, which occur at higher amplitudes. These measurements are an important part of the development process of audio products, and it should be easy, fast and cost-effective for engineers to get this information. We have also learned from the standard that most measurements can be performed at a single point. So, where should I measure my loudspeaker? The obvious answer to this question is the anechoic chamber. Here you can perform direct acoustic measurements. However, going to a large room, like a warehouse, and using time windowing may be also very practical. Using modern methods, like holographic scanning, minimizes the room requirement and can be done in any room, for example, your office. Thus, a room with lower acoustical performance needs a more complex analysis system. Let's have a look at these three methods in detail. A direct measurement in the anechoic chamber is fast, and we can measure the linear as well as the non-linear characteristics. However, no anechoic room is perfect. Below the cutoff frequency, typically below 100 Hz, the accuracy of these measurements is limited. Also, the costs and the availability of an anechoic room are an issue. Time windowing, on the other hand, is a quite cost-efficient solution because this method is applicable in almost every room. However, the frequency range is very limited. This method cannot be used for low frequencies, typically below 500 Hz, and distortion measurements are not possible. The most accurate fundamental response can be determined with a holographic measurement. This works in any room and gives very comprehensive and accurate 3D information. However, this method requires multiple measurements and some robotics to do this. Especially for complex sound sources at high frequencies, a lot of points are needed which is time-consuming. So, no matter what method you use, you have to cope with some drawbacks. For that reason, the in-situ room compensation uses a new approach that minimizes the drawbacks. So, let's have a closer look at it. The ISC is based on an acoustic measurement at a test position. This measurement can be performed in any room, like your office, by filtering the microphone signal with a compensation function. The influences of the measurement environment can be removed. This simulated free field condition is the key for further analysis and diagnostics, either in time or frequency domain. The compensation function is based on a reference that can be gained in various ways. Using this approach minimizes the drawbacks by optimizing the measurement for a single point. Looking at a particular in-situ measurement, we can describe our loudspeaker 
as the sum of the linear transfer function h and the non-linear distortion n. In a normal room, this acoustical output interacts with the room, which clearly affects the measurement results of both the time and the frequency domain. Impulse response and energy time curve show the long decay of the room, and the fundamental and harmonic distortion are highly influenced by the room modes at certain frequencies. Applying a filter to the time signal of the microphone, the room effects are removed from both linear and non-linear response. Thus, an accurate measurement of the fundamental and harmonic distortion can be performed that fulfills standard conditions. The only thing we need is a reference measurement. So, how to get a good reference? There are several ways to get a reference, depending on the complexity of the device under test. We can determine a free field reference by a holographic measurement or a measurement in a good and echoic chamber. But also near field measurements or simulations based on electrical and mechanical measurements are possible. One of the simplest cases, a transducer at low frequencies, for example, can be modeled very accurately using field small parameters. For closed box systems, a near field measurement is a very common way to correct low frequencies. However, when the complexity of the sound source increases, for example for vented box designs or at higher frequencies when the cone breaks up, simple models have their limitations. Here, a more advanced measurement system, like the Klippel Near Field Scanner, enables accuracy and flexibility with less assumptions. The in-city room compensation module supports different compensation methods. Dependent on measurement position and measurement environment, one of the methods is beneficial. For more information, please see the paper linked in the description. The following demo focuses on a measurement in an office environment and uses the LFR method, complete compensation with low frequency reference that only requires a reference for low frequency, which can be easily and fast measured with the near field scanner system. Now, it's time for some practical measurements. Our test object is a passive two-way loudspeaker system that has a vented box design. In the following demo, I will guide you through the complete workflow, starting with a reference measurement, then calibrating a test setup and calculating the compensation filter. And finally, performing standard measurements. Step 1. The reference measurement. There is a near field scanner in our office, so this would be the choice for the reference measurement. Once the dimensions of the loudspeaker and the reference point is defined by moving the microphone to these positions, the robot is ready to start. Keeping in mind that the LFR method needs only the free field response at low frequencies, up to 1 kHz, we can benefit a lot from the holographic measurement approach. The sound field of such a speaker below 1 kHz is relatively simple and doesn't require a lot of points. That's why the NFS performs a rough scan with only 100 measurement points which took about 15 minutes. After finishing the scan, all the data is stored in a KDBX database, and I can continue with the processing. The measurement data container includes the coordinates and impulse responses of all measurement points. Also, meta information about the setup is stored here. After running the operation, the measurement grid is visualized. At next, the NFS field identification processes the measurement data. This starts with standard signal processing, which is followed by the identification of the sound field coefficients. Having a look at the fitting error, we can see that the data is valid up to about 2 kHz, which is totally enough for my application. However, it would be no problem to get valid information over the full audio band, but this would require a higher order of expansion and more measurement points. For such a speaker, you would need typically about one hour of scanning time. In the end, the NFS visualization provides the full 3D information of the loudspeaker system. 
Step 2. In-Situ Measurement Now, it's time to set up the in-situ measurement. For this, the equipment was moved to another room, so the near-field scanner is free for other measurement tasks. The speaker will be measured on axis in one meter distance. The loudspeaker and the microphone are placed in the middle of the room to get the first reflection as late as possible. However, the room isn't quite big, so there is only 1.5 meter to the first wall. Often, it can be beneficial to do ground floor measurements, for example when your room is wide but has a low ceiling so feel free to use such setups for your in-situ testing. Back to our DB Lab database. I have already created a new object called ISC. This contains three operations, a NFS visualization, which is the reference at low frequencies, a TRF transfer function measurement module, which measures with a logarithmic sweep, and an ISC in-situ room compensation module. The NFS visualization provides the free field frequency response of the loudspeaker. In advance, I have calculated the on-axis frequency response. This gives a very accurate low frequency reference because of the holographic processing. You may have also noticed the peaks and dips below 40 Hz. This is caused by noise because this loudspeaker is not producing any sound here. So this is uncritical for the following measurements. Now, everything is ready to perform some acoustical measurements. So, let's do it. The TRF starts with the measurement of the amplifier gain. This is done silently so the speaker cannot be damaged. Then, there is a sequence with a noise floor measurement and the main measurement. Based on the impulse response the TRF transfer function module, calculates the fundamental frequency response, as well as the harmonic distortion, using the Farina technique. The time domain results are showing very clearly the problems of this measurement. The room has a long decay of about 500 milliseconds, and the first reflections are coming very early. We can see this clearly in the energy time curve. Furthermore, this reverberation also affects the non-linear distortion which makes a separation of the different distortion components almost impossible. The frequency response shows also very typical issues of a measurement in a normal non-anchoic room. Especially, low frequencies below 500 Hz are dominated by room resonances. There are dramatic peaks and dips by more than 10 dB in the fundamental and effects on the distortions as well. When looking at the relative distortion, the measurement result is even worse. This window is showing the distortion relative to the fundamental response. The post-shaping of the room impulse response makes it almost impossible to get some valid information about the harmonic distortions generated by the device under test. I'm also facing the issue that I would get totally different results when varying the position in the room. So. What can I do with these data? And how can I fix the problems of my measurement room? This is where the ISC in situ room compensation module steps in. Let's have a look at the configuration of this operation. The summary shows three different points. A test point. Here the in situ transfer function was measured. A free field reference position, which is in my case the NFS visualization and an evaluation point. At this position, the final results are mapped. To keep it simple, all these points are in the same position in this example. However, it is possible to choose different distances, for example when measuring in the near field, and compensate for near field effects as well. In the property page of the ISC module, I have done the following settings. I'm using the LFR, low frequency reference method, that calculates a complete compensation function over the full audio band, but requires only a low frequency reference. This is possible by combining the high frequencies of the windowed in situ measurement with the low frequency response of the reference. The responses are merged in the cross frequency range that is defined here from 500 Hz to 1 kHz. 
This range is also used for automatic validity checks and adjustments. In addition, I have activated the harmonic distortion measurement flag to ensure that harmonic distortions are not compensated and will remain in the data. In the categories below, you can define the in situ test position and reference position. For the test point, I'm linking the TRF in situ operation. I have also inserted the measurement distance of 1 meter and the distance to the first reflecting wall of 1.5 meter. Based on this information, the ISC module does an automatic windowing. As a low frequency reference, I'm linking the NFS visualization operation. In the category transfer function adjustment, I'm using the default settings. The selected gain option adjusts distance and measurement conditions. For example, to transform a 2 pi half space measurement into 4 pi full space data. In my case, this will have no effect because this is identical for both in situ and reference measurement. The delay option is adjusting small mismatches in the propagation delay. This option is very useful to compensate for small imprecisions in the physical setup. Let's run the operation. Now, the ISC calculates the impulse response of the measurement room, which can be used as a compensation filter for any further measurement. In the frequency response window, we can see the sound pressure level of the in-situ measurement in black and the full band reference in green. This shows very clearly the huge influence of the measurement room, which causes a variation of more than 20 dB. In addition, the ISC module has created an automatic copy of the in-situ TRF operation with a compensation filter applied. Let's compare this with the original in-situ measurement. At first, I'm comparing the impulse response and the energy time curve to see how my filter is performing in time domain. For a better comparison, I'm copying the curve into the same window. In blue, we can see the impulse response and energy time curve with the compensation filter. This filter has removed the long reverberation of the room and only the short decay of the speaker is left. Having a closer look at the nonlinear distortion, at the end of the response, we can see shorter impulses. This shows that the room reflections has been removed successfully from the distortion components. Let's also compare the fundamental and harmonic distortion of both measurements. I'm copying the results into the same graphic window to make it easier to compare the data. For now, I will focus my comparison on the fundamental and THD but feel free to check also the individual distortion, like the second, third, or higher orders. As before, the blue curves show the corrected measurement data. The fundamental frequency response has now a very smooth shape because the strong room modes are removed from the data. Furthermore, the absolute level of THD has changed, so the compensation filter work also for the non-linear response of the speaker. Let's also check the relative total harmonic distortion. Here, we can see a big improvement. With the compensation filter, I can perform an accurate acoustical measurement of the distortion of the speaker. Finally, I want to prove the results. To do this, I will vary the position of my measurement setup in the room, but keep the microphone at one meter on axis. This simple double check helps me verify the accuracy of the measurement results. In the database, I'm duplicating the in-situ TRF and the ISC module. I can keep most of the settings. I just have to make sure the correct operations are linked. Let's measure and compare the measurement results. For comparison, I'm copying the curve into the same graphic window. As expected, the in-situ TRF measurements of the two positions are very different. Especially at low frequencies, below 500 Hz different room modes are excited when moving the setup in the room. Also, the THD is not comparable. 
there are huge variations between both measurements. However, I can use the in-situ room compensation module for the second measurement as well. For this point, the ISC calculation gives a different compensation filter for the room. But let's have a look at the corrected measurement data. I'll copy the curves for comparison. After applying the compensation filter, I'm getting very consistent results of the frequency response and the harmonic distortion. This proves that I can do accurate and reliable measurements with the in-situ room compensation module in my office. Let's summarize. The in-situ room compensation helps you to perform fast and accurate loudspeaker measurements in any environment. The method is applicable to any stimulus to measure the linear as well as the non-linear characteristics of your audio device. The ISC requires reference data and the holographic near-field scanning is an accurate, flexible and fast solution for that issue. So unlock the potential of the in-situ room compensation module and transform your office into a perfect free field environment. Reach out to support at clipple.de or sales at clipple.de to discover more about our measurement solution and to explore the testing possibilities with the in-situ room compensation module for your test lab.